Hello viewers, welcome to this talk on Davison and Germer experiment. I'm very happy to inform you that these two scientists received Nobel Prize in Physics in 1937 for this particular experiment. I hope you will be happy to learn this Nobel Prize 1 experiment. The objective of today's talk is to facilitate the learners to learn about Davison and Germer electron diffraction experiment. The learning outcomes will be, the learners will be able to explain the Davison and Germer experimental setup. They will be able to state the need for low tension battery and high tension battery during the experiment. They discuss the diffraction of electron beam at the single crystal of nickel. Learners will be able to calculate the wavelength of scattered electrons using Bragg's formula and the formula suggested by de Broglie. They will be able to compare the wavelengths and conclude that the beam of electrons behave like waves and understand that Davison and Germer experiment provides an excellent proof for de Broglie hypothesis. Actually, Davison and Germer never did this experiment with the intention of proving de Broglie matter waves. So their intention was to project electron beam on a nickel chloride crystal. And when the incident electron beam gets scattered, they wanted to study how the scattered light, whether the intensity of the scattered light is uniform or continuously varying. The entire setup, that the electron gun, the nickel chloride crystal, and the detector, Faraday cylinder, which is connected to a galvanometer, everything was kept in a vacuum chamber. And they did it. What is the need for the vacuum chamber? When electron beam is allowed to fall on the nickel crystal, if air particles are there, air particle might cause some disturbance to the path of this electron beam. And some that study will not be exactly perfect. So to avoid air molecules collision with the electron beam or air molecules interaction with the electron beam, they kept the entire setup in the in a chamber completely evacuated. Uh, no air molecule was there. And they allowed the electron beam to fall on the nickel crystal. But uh, during this experiment, some accident took place. What happened? Some air entered into the chamber. As a result, that air interacted with the nickel crystal, nickel chloride, some interaction with the air molecules. The nickel crystal got a coating of oxide. So they realized that then scattering may not be due to nickel chloride. So they wanted to remove that oxide layer on the nickel crystal. So what they did, they heated, they took out the nickel crystal and gave a heat treatment. What treatment? Heat treatment. They heated. When they heated, that oxide went and that crystal was all right. They brought back and kept it at the target and allowed the electron beam to fall on it and the scattered light took place. This time when we when they studied the scattered light, it showed a remarkable change, some abnormal, abnormal behavior, some anomalous behavior. That means earlier when they repeated the experiment, they observed some uh, that intensity is continuously varying with the position of the Faraday cylinder. Now, when they observed the scattered light with the spectrogram, they observed that some maxima and minima are present. You know, in interference, in diffraction, you have studied about condition for minima, condition for maxima, all these properties of a wave. So it was a surprise why the scattered beam suddenly showing minima and maxima. We are using electron particle beam, but here behavior of wave is observed. Scattered light is showing some minima and maxima. How could the wave nature come? The scientist D. Broglie proposed that a moving particle can be associated with the matter waves. So they thought maybe the electron beam of electron particles, when they get scattered, they show the wave nature. So that way Davison and Germer experiment became a direct evidence and the first evidence for de Broglie hypothesis that moving particles are associated with matter waves. 
so d bragley for giving this idea got nobel prize and davison and germer got nobel prize for providing experimental proof for d bragley hypothesis now the experimental setup this uh, curled line here is named as f tungsten filament and there are two types of batteries here this is called low tension battery this is called high tension battery we use a low tension battery to heat the filament to red hot when current passes the filament becomes heated up so due to the heating the electrons are emitted from the tungsten filament so you call this process as thermionic emission now these electrons will be emitted in all direction but you provide slits that means that small hole will be there those electrons entering through the hole alone will be allowed to pass so slit 1 slit 2 now when it is coming here you can see there is another another plate it is connected to the positive potential electrons are coming from the tungsten filament electrons are having negative charge when they come here they see a positive voltage so as a result what happen electron with negative charge the electron gets accelerator uh, and it is falling on the nickel crystal here so this is a holder here nickel crystal is fixed in the holder there is a handle so by turning it you can just turn the crystal you can make the crystal little incline little turning this way or that way uh, the position of the nickel crystal the face of the nickel crystal for the electron beam can be changed with the help of this handle right the accelerated beam of electrons falling on the nickel crystal in the nickel crystal many atoms are there in different layers so as a result when it is falling on a layer of atoms the incident electron particles are getting scattered in different directions now how many electrons are getting scattered that can be detected with the help of a cylinder called c the name for c is actually faraday cylinder the speciality of the faraday cylinder is that it acts as a detector it detects the number of electrons coming in that direction so the detector can be able to move on a semi circular scale so exactly you can note down at what angle the faraday cylinder is there so the electron beam after getting scattered they are received by the faraday cylinder here the faraday cylinder is connected to a galvanometer galvanometer will show you what is the amount of electron it has received in that position you keep some potential let me say 40 volts you have kept now you keep the faraday cylinder at this point note down the reading of the galvanometer then move the faraday cylinder to the next position next position next position like that at each position what is the galvanometer reading you have to record it so you have finished recording completely for one particular voltage let me say 40 volts and you have recorded the readings of the galvanometer for various position of the faraday cylinder on the circular scale now you are repeating the experiment this time keep 44 volts in a faraday cylinder once again you keep at different position note down the series of readings then you make 48 volts note down the readings 52 56 60 64 68 like that when the voltage is increased the acceleration the electron beam gets more accelerated thus its velocity will be increasing with a higher velocity it will come and strike the crystal and the beam gets scattered here that way you can take the readings you can draw the graph according to this graph this is the incident beam from the electron gun so the beam is getting scattered in different directions faraday cylinder keep at particular angle take the readings so completely on the graduated scale at different position node can draw and connect all those points you are getting the reading you can see it was a plain curve next you change the accelerating voltage to 44 volts this time when you repeated they saw a small bump so it was a surprise for them it's a accidental discovery then they became more interested now accelerating voltage they changed to 48 volts and repeated the entire experiment this time when they when they drew the graph you see the bump size has increased and then again they increase the accelerating voltage you look at the bump size has so much increased so this is the position at the time faraday cylinder was at 50 degree the incident beam and at 50 degree they were making the observation the bump showed a bump or king showed a highest peak then when they increase you can see the bump height is reduced 
64 volts very much reduced. 68 volts, almost 40 volts what they got, almost a similar graph they are getting. So in between 40 and 68, the electron beam exhibited certain property that means minimum peak, maximum peak, minimum peak, like that. So minimum, maximum, all these are the properties of waves. So when you study the interference pattern, when two rays at certain angle interfere constructively with each other, it can produce a spectrum of dark and bright bands having minimum intensity. See, dark bands means minimum intensity, bright bands means maximum intensity. Same way in a diffraction also, when the incident beam is getting diffracted at the edges of the line, they interfere and produce a band. You may see small uh, peaks and maximum peak, first order maximum, second order maximum. This uh, minimum bump, maximum bump and minimum bump on day clearly speaks that in these particular voltages, the electron particles behave like wave and show the wave-like property. So all the observations we studied, we understand that when phi equal to 50 degree, the bump height was maximum. And then when you further increase the accelerating voltage from 54 to 58, 62 or 64, 68, the bump height uh, was going on decreasing. The bump in its most prominent state, that maximum state verifies the existence of electron waves, or you can say the matter waves associated with the moving particle. So according to de Broglie, lambda for electron is equal to 12.26 by square root of V. Now V 54 volts, they substituted and got the value for 1.67 Armstrong unit. See, the incident beam was electron beam of electron particles, but they were calculating the wavelength associated with those electron particles. So very clearly, a direct proof for de Broglie hypothesis that the particle exhibit wave-like nature also. So directly it is a proof, but it has to be cross-verified by another verification. So we know in solid-state physics, uh, Bragg's law, you, so here they considered uh, Bragg's planes and they have considered incident being has fallen on this plane of atoms and got scattered in this angle. From the graph, we observed that the angle between the incident beam and the scattered beam was 50 degree. At 50 degree, an accelerating potential when it was 54 volts, the bump height was maximum. So at that uh, position, when phi was 50 degree, for that position, because bump was maximum, they wanted to calculate the wavelength. This is the Bragg's plane, so many planes. We are considering this plane. So the incident beam strikes this plane of atoms getting scattered. The angle between the incident beam and the scattered beam is 50 degree. So what is the angle between the Bragg plane and the incident beam? It is theta, this theta or this theta. So how to calculate this theta? It's 180 degree minus 50 degree. Two theta is 180 minus 50 degree. So what is theta? 180 minus 50 by 2, which is giving you 65 degrees. Next, you substitute Bragg's law, you know, 2D sin theta equal to n lambda. D is nothing but the distance between the consecutive atoms. This is D, or even this distance is D you can take. In the, for the entire crystal, the distance between two atoms will be same. So the spacing, atomic spacing, the distance between two atoms, this is the characteristics of the material we have chosen. If it is nickel, that D happens to be 0.91 Armstrong unit. If you take sodium chloride, it will be different. So D will be the spacing between the atoms, which will be different for different materials. They substituted in the formula 2 into this spacing into sine 65 degree, that theta value they substituted. They found lambda to be 1.65 Armstrong unit. By de Broglie formula, we got lambda equal to 1.67. But here it is 1.65, which are very much closer to each other. Bragg's law only for base, say we apply. Now that we have applied in this current situation, and the lambda is calculated, 
they both agreed very well with each other so very directly confirming that davison and germer experiments are direct proof for de broglie concept so this is uh, another experiment so the same year scientist uh, thompson he did this experiment in england so he thought that like instead of x rays we use uh, Uh, electron beam and maybe it to fall on a metal metal foil which is made up of atoms so if you pass x rays the spectrum the scattered light will show uh, circular fringes like this so with the electron beam he did similar pattern he got so this type of dark band bright band dark band it is purely due to diffraction the incident beam at the atoms at the edges of the atoms they get diffracted this is the diffraction pattern so very clearly proving the wave nature this is second experiment proving de broglie concept the electron beam is associated with the waves thank you all i hope you have enjoyed this learning thank you